The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of End Time Headlines. Uh, there was a uh, a headline that went mainstream, made a lot of waves in the mainstream news outlets, and this was kind of a topic of conversation. And it kind of inspired me to talk about this today. And uh, there was a story that came out this past week, and it was dealing with a diver uh, in Massachusetts, off the, co- uh, the coast of Massachusetts. I don't know if anybody saw this, um, but he was a hunting lobster off the coast of Massachusetts when he suddenly found himself being swallowed by a whale and was actually inside the belly of this whale and was, uh, and he was, he ended up being spat out onto, sh- uh, of the whale, of the mouth of the whale. And as a result of this, it spun a, a whole online uh, debate on it obviously anyone who has any kind of biblical understanding or knowledge of the story of Jonah, this got brought up into a lot of forums. And of course, atheists ran wild on this. And so this is what kind of inspired this, uh, what we're going to talk about today. So at this time, I want to welcome everybody. If you're this is your first time joining us via by Facebook Live or by YouTube or wherever you're watching this platform where you're able to comment, please let us know in the comment section below that, this, that you're new and that this is your first time and where you're joining us from. Today, I wanna be dealing with how did Jonah survive three days in a belly of a whale? Because when when you talk about the story of Jonah, atheists will go nuts over this, skeptics go nuts over this. And that's what we're gonna talk about. So let me get to this story first. Though scientists claim that, quote, whales are incapable of swallowing humans, this is actually the fourth time in recent history that a man has found themselves praying, uh, or this is the fourth time in history that someone has found themselves inside the belly of a whale. Early On early morning, on a Friday morning, a commercial lobster diver by the name of Michael Packard went for his second dive of the day off Herring Cove Beach off Province, Provincetown, Massachusetts. Uh, he's found himself surrounded by a fleet of boats catching striped bass. Conditions for diving were good with visibility about 20 feet and the water temperature was 60 degrees. Packard found himself 35 feet down and about 10 feet from the bottom when suddenly he was swallowed by a humpback whale. According to Packard's own testimony, he said that, quote, all of a sudden I felt this huge shove and the next thing I knew it was completely black. Packard told the Cape Cod Times, quote, I could sense I was moving and I could feel the whale squeezing with with the muscles in his mouth. I was completely inside, it was completely black. Quote, I thought to myself, there's no way I'm getting out of here. I'm done. I'm dead. All I could think of was my boys. They're 12 and 15 years old. According to Packard, he estimated that he was in the well for 30 to 40 seconds before the, before the, the well finally surfaced and spit him out. He said, quote, I saw light and he started throwing his head side to side. And the next thing I knew, I was outside in the water. According to Packard crewman, uh, Josh, or Josiah Mayo witnessed the entire event. Quote, there was all this action at the top of the water, according to Mayo, saying that he initially thought it was a great white shark. Mayo actually pulled Packard from the water, taking him to shore where he was admitted to the hospital and treated for soft tissue damage to his leg. Quote, thank God it wasn't a white shark. He seems that he sees them all the time out there, said Cynthia Packard's sister. Quote, he must have thought he was done. Now listen to this. A director 
of humpback whale studies at the Center for Coastal Studies in Provincetown told the media that swallowing people was not normal behavior for a whale. Based on what um, based on what was described, this would have been this would have to be a quote mistake and an accident on part of the humpback whale. Robbins went on to say that suggesting that it may have been a juvenile feeding on on sand lance, a small fish also known as sand eel, though it uh, although it is not a true eel, Robbins explained that when humpback whales feed, opening their mouth, causing their mouths to billow, blocking their forward vision. And he went on to say that it was very possible that this is how he was swallowed. Quote, they, he went on to say, quote, it is not something I've heard. Uh, I'm sorry, quote, it, this is not something I have heard happening before. A saying of the incident. He said, quote, so many things would have to happen to end up in the path of a feeding well. So this is very interesting. Now, that leads me to what everybody's thinking when they heard this story. And again, what spawned uh, a lot of a topic of conversation on many blogs and forums and podcasts. And that is the story of Jonah. So I want to talk about this in the book of Jonah. Uh, and I'm not going to read all this, but I'm going to kind of give you the highlighted points of this. The Lord speaks to Nineveh, who was, or I'm sorry, Jonah, who was a prophet in his day. And he told him to go to Nineveh and preach against it, calling the city to repentance. But Jonah was in rebellion against God and did not want to do what God had called him to do. So the Bible says that he arose and he fleed to a place called Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And then the Bible says he went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid fare. He went down into it from the presence of the Lord. But the Bible says the Lord sent a great a wind upon the sea and a mighty tempest or a storm came upon the sea so that the ship was about to be broken up. And as a result of this, the mariners who were on board became very frightful and each man cried out to his own little God, G, little G-O-D, not the God, but their own God, their own deities. And they began to throw their cargo over the ship and to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the deepest parts of the ship and he was fast asleep. So the captain, being aware of what was going on, went down and got Jonah out of his sleep, out of his nap, if you would, brought him up and said to him, what is your occupation? What, why have you brought this trouble upon us? So these men began to figure out that it was Jonah's defiance and his rebellion against God that actually brought the storm and brought uh, the destruction that was coming upon the ship. So Jonah says, I am a Hebrew I, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven and the one who made the sea and the dry land. And then the Bible says in verse 10 of Jonah chapter one, that the men became exceedingly afraid and said, why have you done this? For the Bible says that the men had known that he had fled the presence of the Lord. And they said, what must we do to you so that we can get out of this storm and that we can live and not die from the storm that's about to tear this boat in half. And Jonah says in Jonah 1.12, he says, quote, pick me up and throw me into the sea and then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great storm is because of me. And nevertheless, the men rode hard to return to land, but they could not, for the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. So therefore, they cried out to the Lord. So now they begin to cry out to the Lord. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob said, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life, and do not charge us with his blood 
For you, O Lord, have done as it has pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and they throw him into the sea and the sea ceased from raging or the storm stops. So the Bible says, then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. And here it is, verse 17. And now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Now stop right here. This is where all the scientific minded, the atheist and the agnostics and the free thinkers got onto the forums and they got onto the blogs and they begin to rebuke Christianity and they begin to rebuke Christians that actually believe that Jonah had survived and was preserved three nights in the belly of a whale. Because after all, we know that a stomach isn't filled with oxygen. It's filled with things like salt water and dead fish and methane gases and digestive enzymes. Therefore, a man could no more survive in the belly of a fish for three days than he could hold his breath for three days. But we have to dig a little bit deeper to understand how Jonah was actually preserved. Now we could say, well, God supernaturally protected him and kept him from the methane gases, kept him from the water that could capacitate and fill his lungs and he would drown and all these things. But I want to take you a little bit deeper and actually go into the scriptures and tell you what actually happened? See, if you go to Jonah chapter 2, verse 2 and 3, it's so it said that quote, I cried by reason. This is Jonah's own testimony. He says, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell. I cried, and thou heard my voice. Wait a minute, stop. Jonah said, I cried from the belly of hell. Not the belly of a fish, not the belly of a mammal, not the belly of a whale. He said, out of the belly of hell. Read it in your scriptures in Jonah chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. He said, out of hell I cried, and you heard my voice. For you have cast me into the deep. The word deep here in Hebrew is to home. It's the same word used in Genesis chapter 1. When it talks about the earth was void the earth was full, it was uh, without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the to home or the deep. Because, and the, um, let me go back to that, but I'm going to read this. And thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Now I'm going to read, let me read on. And then I said, quote, I'm cast out of your sight. Yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The waters have compassed me about. Even to the soul, the deep has closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped around my head. Jonah recalls that in the midst of the waters billowing around him, the weeds wrapping around his head, him being swallowed by the fish, and then dying. I said he died. Jonah wasn't supernaturally kept alive in the belly of a whale. Jo my friend, Jonah actually physically died. His physical body remained in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights, but his soul and spirit came out of his body. Listen to this. Watch this. Let me read on. Bo Jonah 2, 6, and 7, quote, I went down to the bottoms of the mountains and the earth with her bars, B-A-R-S. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet has thou brought me up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came unto thee and unto thy holy temple. 
Jonah makes references to the bars of the earth. Jonah was, listen, he wasn't talking about the bars inside of a well. He was specifically speaking of the bars that are the gates or the entrances of hell itself. By the way, I could pull out a, we did a whole segment in one of our podcasts about the location of hell. You go through the Old Testament scriptures and it references hell being below. It says it's in the heart of the earth. When Korah, when the art, when the, the sons of Korah were swallowed up, it says they went down unto hell below. Luke 16, the beggar and Lazarus, the or the rich man and Lazarus. The beggar, when he died, he was in a place of comfort, but the Come on, the rich man went down into a place that the Bible references is hell. Okay, now watch this. So let me prove it to you. Let me read you a verse of scripture. Matthew chapter 12, verses 38 through 40, Jesus is speaking. And then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered and saying, teacher, and they're speaking to Jesus, we want to see a sign from you. But Jesus answered and said unto them, an evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Now, what was the sign of the prophet Jonah? He tells you in verse 40, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now to the undiscerning and the skeptics and the agnostics and the atheists, they don't have a clue of what Jesus just spoke here. But let me, let me talk about Jesus for a moment. You do know that when Jesus died on the cross and gave up his spirit, the Bible says that before he ascended he first descended and went into the lower parts of the earth and preached to the spirits of the dead now how long was he there three days and three nights and the bible says in captivity was in and, and he gave up the bible says and he when he came up he led captivity captive what was Jesus doing down into the lower parts of the earth? He was preaching to the spirits that had been confined in a place called Abraham's bosom to the righteous who were confined in an upper compartment. But there was the unrighteous who died under the law of Moses and they were found guilty and they were wicked and they were in a place called Hades a holding chamber of torment in which your Bible says in Luke 16 that the rich man was crying out, saying, send someone to cool my tongue. He had all five senses. He felt the heat. He was separated from the presence of God. He remembered things. He remembered that he had brothers, and that's why he pleaded with the Lord to send to send someone to preach to his brothers, lest they go to this place of torment. So when Jesus referenced the sign of Jonah as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Friends, listen, Jonah died in the belly of the well, and he he experienced, and I know this is going to, listen, for all the Seventh-day Adventists, they're not going to like what I'm talking about here, but Jonah experienced a, what we would call in medical terms today, an NDE. That's an acronym for a near-death experience. Life after death. Jonah died, and he was standing at the gates of hell. 
And don't ask me how he did it, whether it was before he gave up his spirit. Somehow in that time frame, he cried out. The Bible says it right here in Jonah chapter 2 that he cried out. He cried out. And then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Listen to this. Let me read back this. I cried. This is Jonah chapter two, verses two and three. I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell. Come on, somebody. And God said, come on. I, by my mercy, I'm going to give this prophet another chance. God spared him. The whale spit him up. Not in Tarshish. But spit him up on the bank of Nineveh. Why? Because that's where God wanted him all along. Now look. You could call me super spiritual, whatever you want. But when I see stories like this that defies reason, defi listen, th we have an expert who is the director of Humpback Whale Studies in Massachusetts who says that whales swallowing people is not a normal occurrence. He went on to say, quote, this is not something I've ever heard before. He went on to say that there is so many things that has to happen in order for this to even happen. But it did happen. Let he who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. I'm telling you, guys, God is speaking. And isn't it the last time that there was a reference to a man being swallowed up by a well and being spit out was in reference to Jesus speaking to a wicked and perverse generation that's seeking after a sign and saying to it, there will be no sign given unto you except the sign of the prophet Jonah. As three, as he was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Listen, Jesus is coming back. He's coming back as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There's so many signs. The book of Daniel says, that the wicked will see these signs and they will have no discernment. But the, those that are his, those that are righteous, those that are walking in covenant with him, those that have an ear to the spirit of God, they will discern these things and they will know the times and seasons in which we're in. There is a group of people out there that are what we would call and what we would identify as, this is just a general term, but we could call them the sons of Issachar. And for all you ladies, we could say sons and daughters. These are the remnant that have discernment of the, they see these things and they discern the times and seasons in which we're in. So I'm going to ask you something. How many more signs has to take place? How many unusual, extraordinary, historic, record-breaking, once-in-a-lifetime things that has to happen in order for God to rattle your cage and to slap you around a little bit and say, wake up. For the coming of the Son of Man is at hand. Listen, endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. We want, it, want you guys to keep up with our ministry. Uh, we're going to pray here in just a second. We want you to, to uh, be aware of how you can keep up with our ministry. Because listen, guys, we, we don't do just podcasts for all you guys that may not be aware of this. On a day-to-day -day basis, we share news and headlines from a prophetic perspective. People ask me all the time, 
What's the point? You'd be surprised, guys, you would be shocked how many people get on our Facebook page of End Time Headlines and they, and they blast us and ridicule, well, it's, it's me because I'm the one that shares the articles. I always say us, but it's, it's me. Uh, they blast me for sharing the news and they get mad about it because it's, why don't you share something positive? which we do. We share scriptures. We do podcasts, encouragement, exhorting, edifying weekly. Why don't you talk about positive things? Why don't you talk about, and, I'm, and, I, and I have to reiterate this over and over. It's called end time headlines. Guys, we deal with the signs of the times, the coming of the Lord. And when you read the book of Revelation, you read the book of Daniel, you heed the words of the prophets, the New Testament apostles, such as the Apostle Paul and Jude and Peter and others who talked about the times and the seasons of the coming of the Lord. It is not a fairy tale. It's not something that you sit around with your kids at night and read to them before they go to bed. We're talking about seals being broken. We're talking about bowls being opened. We're talking about, we're talking about the judgment of God. And we're going to keep teaching, we're going to keep preaching, and we're going to keep showing you the signs of the times that we're in. Why? Because it is to wake up a generation. That's what our objective is, is to inform you of the times and seasons in which we're in. So listen, if you want to keep up with everything we're doing, go get our app. Download the app. It's right there on your screen. You guys that are watching this, uh, if you're watching this, by Facebook or by YouTube, you're right there on the screen. You can see it. Download the free app. Get it on Android. Get it on Apple. Get it into your hands. Push yes for push notifications. You're going to get all of our news and headlines, and you will have access right there on the bottom of the app. You can listen to our podcast like this while you're mowing the yard, while you're going down the road, whatever, whatever you're doing. You're doing your housework or you're doing chores or whatever you got to do. You can listen to the podcast. You can watch us on our YouTube channel right there from our app. It's all right there conveniently for you and for you. And it's a blessing to you. And it's free guys. Just download it. Type in end time headlines, download the free app, get it into your hands. It's always guys. We want to give you an opportunity again, as always, if this ministry has been a blessing to you, it encourages you, it equips you, it informs you week after week after week. If the Lord puts it upon your heart to partner with us, be a monthly partner, a supporter of our ministry. We want to give you that opportunity. Again, we, uh, we operate and we do things out of our partnership. By you guys partnering with us, this is how we continue to keep remaining strong year after year after year. And this is how we're able to create the app that was free, the subscription based that was free, the uh, the podcasts are free, the messages are free. We don't sell merchandise and we're able to do that through partners just like you. So we want to give you that opportunity. You can give two ways, either electronically or you can give by check or money order. You can do that through the app or through the main website. Go down to the bottom of on the app, click on donate. You can do that right there. It's going to take you to the page, give electronically. Uh, and, and you can do that right there. You can also give by check or money order. And you can do that at End Time Headlines, P.O. Box 1391. That's Monroe, Georgia, 306. Five, five. Guys, let me give you a real quick announcement real quick before we close out this week. Uh, and then we're going to pray for you guys before we end this, this broadcast today. Um, th this next week, somebody say next week, all next week, we will not do any live broadcasts here as far as podcasts go. Now our news and headlines will continue. We're going to keep doing that. Um, they, you'll still see them coming in, but as far as podcasts, uh, my family and I are, we're taking a, a, a vacation for this year. Uh, we're doing that next week. We will be gone. Uh, we will not be back until the, not this coming Monday, but the following Monday. Um, uh, we won't be back until then. So we're going to take some needed rest and some time to, uh, just to get recharged and refreshed. But we will, um, if you guys follow us on Facebook, um, you're going to see us post rebroadcast 
um, pre-recorded messages. We will do those probably daily um, while we're in Florida. We'll do that. And you guys that are, did have our app right there. It's going to all our messages on there. They're archives, YouTube, they're all archives. So you can pull up any message you want and listen to those. So we want to encourage you to, 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 to know that so you can go and listen to that. Um, so we just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Uh, again, we'll be flying out tomorrow afternoon around noon, I think it is. Um, there's a lot of crazy things, guys, going on right now with the air travel. I know Southwest got, they had a, uh, all their flights uh, were grounded because of uh, computer glitches and all this stuff. Uh, we're not flying Southwest, we're flying Delta. So I'm hoping uh, we don't have any issues with that. But I know original, uh, our original flight was supposed to leave, I think it was, 10 and then we got a notice that it bumped it all the way out to like past 12 o'clock so uh these airline industries are crazy because they just kind of do whatever they're going to do and you just kind of at the mercy of that so uh if you would guys pray for us for safe travel um there and while we're there and on the way back just the lord's traveling mercies his angels to watch over us and keep us uh, we we greatly appreciate you guys and your prayers of agreement for that as well so let me close guys with this prayer uh, and then we're going to sign off and we will be back here on podcast in about eight days or so so again, and I see all of your comments, guys, on Facebook. Thank you so much for uh, many of you guys wishing me a happy Father's Day. And listen, all you fathers watching, listening by podcast, YouTube, Facebook, let me say in advance, happy Father's Day from End Time Headlines. Uh, we love you guys. We appreciate all of those fathers out there. And uh, listen, just like your family does, we appreciate you and what you do uh, for your kids and for your family and being there. Listen, just being there for your kids in 2021 speaks volume. So we, uh, a great shout out to all the fathers. I know it's only uh, today is, is uh, uh, Friday, but we're just giving a shout out in two days ahead because we won't be able to do that. So let me pray and we're going to close out. I want to keep jab or going on and on and on. I want to be respectful of your time. So Father, thank you for those that are watching today um, and that has joined us for this broadcast. Uh, we I pray for them today. Lord, I just I speak a blessing over them today, over their homes, over their families, over their marriages. Lord, I ask that you'd bless them and that you'd keep them. Lord, meet every need according to, the, to your riches and glory. God, you see every need that's represented. There is so many people watching by Facebook, by YouTube, by podcasts, or however they may be watching this. Lord, if there's anybody watching today that's lost or backslid, I pray for them today that they would repent, that they would make their hearts right. Lord, today, they would not put it off, but right now, right now that they would get right with you and they would get back on track with you. They would get plugged in Lord through a, a local church, a local body, or if they don't have a home church, we welcome you to be a part of this family, this online family, this online gathering week after week after week. Lord, I pray for those that are watching that are hurting emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Lord, if they're hurting in any of these venues or any of these areas, rather, I'm asking, Father, that you would bring healing in those areas. Lord, quicken them, meet their needs, bless them, break through. I speak breakthrough over those areas, Lord. Healing in bodies, uh, pay raises and promotions and increases, healing in marriages, restoration in marriage, marriages, reconciliation in marriages. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your mighty spirit, Lord, that's moving on, on the behalf of those that knows every need. For you said in your word that you know what you, we need of before we even ask. But you required us to ask, seek, and knock so that those that ask receiveth and those that seeketh findeth and those that knock, the door shall be opened. And I thank you, Lord, for your word that goes forth and does not return void, but it will establish and it will quicken and it will prosper in that thing in which it's sent forth. 
And it's in the mighty name of Jesus, all God's people said, amen and amen. All right, guys, again, God bless you. And thank you for coming on today on this Friday. We're going to sign off. We will see many of you and talk to many of you in about eight days. God bless. We'll see you then. Thank you for listening to the End Time Headlines podcast. We pray that you've been blessed and equipped by today's message. For more information about how you can help partner with our ministry, please visit endtimeheadlines.org.